I'm trying to give me a bag. I'm trying to give me a bag. I'm trying to give me a bag. I'm trying to give me a What's up, what's up? You are now listening to FY Fly the podcast. And I'm your host, Hassan Thomas, along with Remy, and we are here to share tools on how millennials can budget, save, invest, and understand student debt and credit to achieve financial freedom. If you're a high school student, college student, or someone who's interested in gaining more financial insight, this podcast is for you. I'm trying to give me a bag. I'm trying to give me a bag. I'm trying to give me a bag. I'm trying to- what's up, what's up, my fly folks out there? How y'all doing? I hope y'all doing all right. Welcome to the FY Fly Podcast. My name is Hassan Thomas, a.k.a. the kid that did and the man that can, baby. And today, we chopping it up with former NFL fullback Jed Collins, a.k.a. the fullback of finance, baby. How you doing? How you doing, my man? Brother, it is a, a neat time space to be able to connect with you on this passion that we share. Uh, it is a really cool moment uh, to see this this industry and this subject not only be as needed as ever, but the yeah, want to has really start, started to turn up. So today's a good day, and uh, yes, just sir. you know, keep hustling. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, man. So here at FY Fly, you know, we like to skip the fluff and get right into the good stuff, man. So the man who can. The- Come on, baby. Come on. So, like I said, we know you're a, you're a former football player, a former fullback, and you played for Dallas and the Saints, correct? Oh, yeah. That's a, just the start of the list. So, so my journey and why I consider myself a great loser is, you know, part mm-hmm. of my upbringing, I got really comfortable in understanding how to not lose but to learn. And in, okay. the, in the NFL, I got cut 12 times, and I get to mm-hmm. walk into rooms full of NFL players and that's kind of my claim to fame. Not many people yeah. have been cut more than I have, uh, <laughs> which is not, you know, it's not the record you want. I was watching uh, NBA uh, last night, Shaquille O'Neal's record for the most misses in a playoff, free throw playoff game. He got, he uh, just lost his record. And he's like, he was bummed about it. I was like, that's a record you want to lose. That's not, that's not a good one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so my journey, you know, I, I, I went to a lot of different cities, got a lot of free sweatshirts, but what I challenged myself was, was how do I walk out of every one of those buildings after mm-hmm. the emotion has settled after the, you know, the sting has been taken away. Cause my dream had just been taken from me. What did mm-hmm. I learn? I got to walk into a room and sit next to some of the best in the world at what they do. For sure. What could I have taken from them? And that was, you know, that was the lessons the NFL and the game of football gave me. So Dallas mm-hmm. was my last stop. I actually never really got to put on pads for Dallas. Uh, mm-hmm. That's an interesting story in and of itself. But, yeah, I made my home and my name down in New Orleans, the Houdat Nation. Uh, yes, changed my life. Okay, okay. And I want to tap into um, a little bit of what you said. But first I want to talk about, you know, a quote that I saw on your Instagram, I believe, and it said that playing football is kind of like, you know, like personal finance and, and football is just alike. You know, it's a game of inches, mm. you know. So can you elaborate on that quote for us? Love to. And, bro, we I don't know how much time we got, but uh, I have a whole, you know, 30, 45 minute uh, ordeal on just this topic. But I'll give you the, the shortened version. You give it a little summary. Yeah, little I got <laughs> uh, I got to work next to a 15 year linebacker in my time in Kansas City when I was playing with the Chiefs, um, mm-hmm. and I noticed it first as you know, rightfully so. I noticed it out on the practice field. We'd be required run 40 yards, and I'd see him, you know, go 45. We'd go 50, he'd go 55. We go into okay. the weight room. We'd do a set of 225. We'd have a set of 10. He would put mm-hmm. on two and a half and do a set of 11. And I started to see these little nuances, these little differences. Yeah. And finally, I went up to him, and we're sitting in the locker room. And I went up to him. I said, man, you know, he was 15 years. So he was, you know, 36, 37 years old. I was like, is it just yeah. old man? Is it hard to slow down on the field? Like, do you forget, <laughs> you know, five pounds? What is five pounds going to do on a bench press? Yeah. And he looked at me, and he said, hey, Jed, do you, do you realize how I stuck around 15 years? I'm I'm shorter, I'm slower, I'm I'm more expensive than every guy in here. How do I stick around mm-hmm. for 15 years? Is I come in every day and I try to steal this. And he held up his hands and he showed me what that 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 mindset was. It's just an inch. He said every mm-hmm. day I come in here and try to steal inches because I know an inch is going to lead to a yard, a yard to a first down, a first down to a Thanks. score, score to a win, and a win takes us to an opportunity to get to the Super Bowl. But yes, it all sir. starts with that inch, and so. I started to take that away, and it, it really mm-hmm. was so profound. Um, and as a fullback, my world, my, my success was measured on six-inch battles. 
National yeah. Football League, you're not going to knock anybody over or move people out of the way. If you if you can get that helmet to go back six inches, that was mm. a win. And so I started to really define my weeks, Monday through Saturday, six days a week, is how can I steal that inch? So on mm. Sundays, I can go out and win and steal that six-inch battle. Um, and that mindset is is perfectly translated into the world of personal finance and stopping mm. to try to, you know, blow people up or in the hole or, or try to, you know, score a touchdown and every, uh-uh. And yeah. money, all we can do is focus on those inches because inches will lead to yards and so on and so on. Um, and so that's really a mindset. As an entrepreneur, you, me, mm. we need to continue to have that and see the, the, the successes and the wins and be able to track yeah. them. And I, I am in a practice now. Uh, we were talking before we got on. We, I took a loss today. But I go mm -hmm. back and I look at yesterday and I see the wins that I wrote down. However, subtle or small, those were pluses. And so that mindset mm -hmm. has, has continued to allow me to take an L today, wake up tomorrow, and go go find my inch tomorrow. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think something huge that you said, it was a lot of great gems, but to really unpack that, I think, you know, when we talk about telling people, you know, that to go like, hey, stop eating out yeah. or hey, you know, pay all of your debt off right now. Like, you know what I mean? Like those different type of things. We're just telling people to jump up here. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that's a whole hundred yard uh, football field. You know what I'm saying? So be a million there. <laughs> Dang. All right. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. So like, I think that that's huge that you've taken that from the NFL and from your experiences and applied them to real life. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Because I, like I said, I was even talking to somebody in the gym and they said um, they love the motivation from David Goggins. They love the things yeah. and things that he does, but they don't like they said they don't like his like his perfectionist um, yep. mindset. And they said the guy was telling me he was like, it just feels unattainable. Yep. You know what I mean? So I feel like that kind of compares to, you know, Dave Ramsey and some of those other um, other financial gurus. Um, and some of their advice telling people like who are here, you know, just to jump over here without entering, intermingling with all the different things inside and taking those inches and taking those steps. Yeah. So elaborate a little bit on how those small incremental habits, and those small incremental changes can lead to big positive changes over time, like investing, uh, investing automatically or mm -hmm. saving automatically and doing things automated. So I look at, you know, and one of the great quotes that I grew up hearing, and I'm sure you have, is practice makes perfect. You know, 100%. How, how do you get to, to wherever you want to go? Practice, practice, practice. And the reality mm -hmm. is we need to get rid of that mindset. Practice makes perfect. There is no perfect. If you go through mm. anything and anywhere, perfection is a myth. And, and you mm. do. You look at the Goggins. You look at the Ramses who just say, flip the switch. You should be perfect. You should. I just I, I changed your world. And I, I love working with students today and, yeah. and joking with them and say, you know, something I say today is going to change your life, change your world. And the reality mm -hmm. is I'm joking. It, it is never going to unless you put it into application. Come Ed, on now. Education without action is worthless. Come and on. The theoretical completely. does not mean anything. So when you start talking about an inch in automating your your savings. I love the quote, and if you want to sum up personal finances in one sentence, I made a dollar, I saved a dime. Yo, are you ready to hit your next level? Do you want to increase your drive, destiny, and dollars? Well, if so, check out my new book, From College to COVID, 24 Lessons Learned During the Lockdown, where I've compiled five of the biggest lessons I learned going from college to COVID to starting my financial literacy empire, FYI Fly. Plus, 19 lessons from your favorite entrepreneurs, entertainers, and athletes that have been featured on our show. There's literally something for everyone. So purchase your copy today at fyfly.com backslash from college to COVID. Let's go. And yet, mm. I look at that, I made a dollar, I saved a dime mindset, and you start to, yeah. to question. Saving is no longer financially literate. It is an important mm. step, but if you are stuck in that save or mindset, you yeah. are always going to have a plan that fails and that mm -hmm. challenges us. So where we start to look at these summation of small events, the, the most perfect to, to translate to personal finances is how Warren Buffett became one of the wealthiest men in the world after the age of 50. 
It is the mm. beauty of compound interest. This eighth yes, wonder sir. of the world is anything but a summation of very small events. And you start mm. to look at that flywheel. And if I, I'm not a big fan, but I've seen enough, you know, cycling people on bikes. And you start yeah. to understand that when you spin a thousand times is going to lead to a massive change and a massive difference. So mm -hmm. as we approach this, we need to stop beating ourselves up for not being perfect. We need to stop yeah. beating ourselves up for losing. Again, I loved being identified. Full bank finance is, is perfect because I like leading the way on and off the field. Yes, but sir. looking at it and saying why I consider myself a great loser is because mm. I grew up losing. I grew up with two older brothers and we played basketball every day. And mm -hmm. if you can take that mindset and say, I didn't lose today, I learned, and that was my inch. And I took a yeah. minor in finances and in money. If we can continually look at the day and the week and say, mm -hmm. it's not over, I'm not perfect, I'm never gonna be, and I'm okay with that. But I know what enough means to me, and that's my formation of a plan. And I'm mm -hmm. progressing towards that. We need to see and celebrate that as success. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think, to, to touch on something that you said, you said how Warren Buffett became, you know, the, the one of the wealthiest men at 50. And the problem is the young folks listening right now. 50. That's all they heard. 50. 50. That's all they heard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, like, how do we change, change that. that mindset on, you know, and, and, and for what I feel for, like, the young folks listening you know, we want fast cash. It, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We 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 don't. I saw someone want to do it on TikTok. They, they did it in three weeks. I'm going to become a mega millionaire in three weeks, or else I'm wasting time. Exactly, exactly. We all chasing fast cash, and that's cool. You know, go yep. out and chase your dream. Chase you know, chase your passion. Chase this. Chase that. But where I feel that we can, you know, start changing the mindset and changing the culture is these these automated savings, these automated investments, put in. 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars, you know, whatever you can do, mm -hmm. you know, whatever amount you can do consistently into a, a savings account, into an investment account, because saving nowadays with inflation, you know, that should just be for an emergency. Yep. You know what I mean? Your money yep. needs to be working for you because if it's not, you're taking an L. Mm -hmm. But can you touch on like, what can we do? to start changing that mindset for mm -hmm. the younger folks. Cause like I said, when you said 50, I know a lot of folks yep. said, oh, I don't care no more. <laughs> and what the, the, the real, the, the statistic there is Warren Buffett made 99% of his wealth after the age of 50. So mm -hmm. it's not even that, it's just, that's the reality. And how does that yeah. happen? And so where I look and change that mindset is, well, how do I enjoy today with knowing the future is still before me? Mm -hmm. It's all around and it's cash management. And again, I don't like that B word budget. Get rid of that. That's a that's a negative because it's very Ooh, we gotta talk about that. It's limiting. It's a limiting mindset and it tells uh -huh. you what to do. I like ideas where I am in control. Cash mm -hmm. management puts me in control. And so how do I change that okay. mindset and not just look at age 50 is I have my paycheck set to where every dollar is going to where I tell it. I employ mm. my money. I see money as not something that I go to work for, but something that works for me. And so how do I uh -huh. balance out this ability to prepare for tomorrow and enjoy today is by looking at that paycheck and saying, I know compound interest. I know I got things working for me in the future because that's where I told that's it to go. But I also know I designated some money to take my, my dad out for lunch on his birthday or go get yeah. my little sister something you know, when she needs it. I've designated mm -hmm. those dollars too. And so it is really around this idea of, can I employ my paycheck? Can I make every dollar I make have a job? Employ your paycheck. Now, right? Feel me? Yeah, I like it. I like it. All, and if you want to change your mindset, it is all around packaging and marketing. And that's what mm -hmm. we've really come to say. You know, you, me, we are out trying to empower people because if you simply sure. look at a, a, a 18 year old today, and I, I get to work with a lot of them and say, you know, save your money and in 50 years, you're going to be, that doesn't mean anything to them. So how yeah. do you change the messaging? You got to learn how to package things and put it in little sayings that you can remember. Employ mm -hmm. your paycheck is something that one person's going to walk away from this session and go, I like that. Yeah. Because sure. I can remember it and I can use it. Mm -hmm. So you talked about that budgeting. I know you said you don't like to use that word. So what, 
cash management system or, or, or budgeting system? Do you, cause it sounds like from what you said, it sounds like the zero based budget, but what do you, what do you use um, to manage your money? So we have a, a system called the money buckets and we have five buckets okay. that we kind of walk through and these are choices. So we really emphasize the idea that each of these are choices. Mm-hmm. Society, personal finance, baby. It's yeah. personal. Uh. Society, <laughs> past, present, future, and compassion. And every okay. paycheck. So I get to walk into a room in about a week. Uh, where I get to walk into a room full of NFL rookies. I get to walk mm. into a room full of 60-year-old doctors. I get to walk into a room full of high school students. And I get to use the same five choices. So that society okay. choice is a change in perspective, a change in mindset around taxes. Everybody sees taxes as a negative. Taxes support everything in the society between what mm. I own and what you own. So we want to change that perspective. Your, okay. your past choices are anything due before the first of the month. Let's say mm. May 1st is coming up. How many dollars have I already spent before May even begins? I need yeah. to look at my debts. I need to look at my bills. I need to look at subscriptions. Something that we need to wake up to today and inflation is forcing this conversation is we are being subscribed to death. Marketing mm. pivoted and said this new generation doesn't want to buy anything, but they'll rent it every month for less dollars. Yeah, everybody got a subscription service. Now. Everybody, <laughs> because they saw and, you know, venture capital started to emphasize it. So that's how kind of we all ran with it. But then you look at your present choices. No explanation there. You do need a measurement between your wants and your needs. Where I find that is in the details. Mm-hmm. We all need a place to live, but we want yeah. a three-car garage. We all need to eat lunch, but we want to go out and have, you know, so that details is where you yeah. can define wants versus needs. That future, mm-hmm. I love to say, if you ever want to have FU money, you got to begin yeah. with future you. So that's that fourth okay. choice. Then that fifth yeah. one, and this is what's really neat and important, is as you categorize these and you see them, that mm-hmm. compassion choice is things that are spent outside of yourself. And that's person, gotcha. that's a place, that's a cause, that's family, that's anything that is going to something and oddly enough, science is telling us that compassion choice is what is actually leading to the most fulfillment and the most overall happiness. Okay. So as you look at your week, society, past, present, future, and compassion, when you mm-hmm. really start to reorganize that, you bump future you first. So then it goes future, society, past, compassion, and you mm-hmm. land in that present choice. And why I love landing in that present choice is because every dollar that goes to that must be spent. And it must okay. be used to enjoy where I'm at today. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So I want to talk to you about um, a budget system that I'm beginning to use, and I'm I'm really starting to like it. It's called the uh, it's called a lifestyle budget. Okay. So basically, for anyone who doesn't know what a lifestyle budget is, that's understanding your fixed expenses. So all of your fixed expenses. So anything that's not going to change, anything that you know you're going to do each month, whether it be your bills whether it be, you know, you eating out at a certain restaurant with your wife, you know, that's a fixed expense because you know you're going to do sure. it every month. Should, you know should do that one every month. <laughs> yeah, got happy wife, happy, yeah. happy life. Huh? <laughs> so with those fixed expenses, that's with this lifestyle budgeting is understanding all of your fixed expenses. So that's investing, saving. So that's mandatory to me. So that investing and saving. So anybody listening, it should be mandatory you as well, because we know we need to be investing for our future and also preparing for the present by saving for emergencies. Yeah. So where the lifestyle budget is really helpful, and I believe it's kind, of, it's it's been easier for me, is understanding your fixed expenses and then everything after that is spendable income. Mm-hmm. So that has worked for me. I've I've included my investing. I've included my savings. So that's uh, my whole life insurance, Roth IRAs, um, the REITs I invest in, real estate investment trust, all those things, savings, business expenses, all into that fixed expense. How do you- and then and then I have my spendable income over here for whatever I want. So something else that's you know definitely a, an emotional topic for us is you know financial literacy and financial management in high schools and colleges mm. so i want to get your opinion like would you say that financial literacy is as important as math and reading like what's what's your take on that what's up what's up oh y'all haven't heard fy fly just released their new website Check out the link in the show notes and help us test out our site. Please check our free features, educational resources, and our blog that we update daily. We look forward to hearing from y'all. Now let's dive in.
I think financial literacy is the singular skill every student on the high school campus will have to use. Math okay. is very important. History is very mm. important. Writing is very important. But if you gather up every career in the world, there is only one unifying fact, and it is that everybody gets a paycheck. And if you don't know how to utilize it, you don't know, and yeah. one of our keys is how to use it. That means you understand your paycheck, you strategize mm -hmm. your paycheck, and you are efficient with your paycheck, USE, use. That is an important piece. And that begs the mm -hmm. question of why haven't we been teaching this in high schools? I am more and more encouraged to see states mandating it now, though we do yeah. not have a national curriculum, a national standard for all to use. I'm fortunate to get to have talked to 10 plus states around their individual standards and to see mm -hmm. the nuances and the differences, why somebody in Florida is different than somebody in Texas or Ohio. Well, yeah. no, it's the same paycheck. It's the same questions. It's, it's the same presence. Uh, you have some socioeconomic differences. Absolutely. But again, mm -hmm. I don't care how big or how small the paycheck is. You have the same choices with every paycheck. So that's true. I think as we look at this, you know, I don't want to say next generation, but as we look at education going forward on high school mm -hmm. and college campuses, we're going to be challenged with what the dream is. Coming from the NFL, one of our hurdles over the last 15 years has been, if all the NFL players are going broke, what is the dream? And we have yeah. to ask ourselves about that with college. If most mm -hmm. students are never getting out of debt, what is the success of going to college? If you, yeah, what is that American dream everybody's been telling, telling us, us about? <laughs> Where's the white picket fence, you know? It's yeah. like, <laughs> So without empowering them and without, again, mm -hmm. education, and education is a vital first step, but as I mentioned earlier, education without application. So looking Where's at it and saying, yes, we, we all need to better speak this language. And the beautiful thing is, is people are talking it today. Everybody is starting to tune into, it's cool to know how to use your money. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So, you know, like, like you even just said, like, we know we need to do better with our money. We we know, yeah. but a lot of us don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, after initially getting, you know, of course, you know, you know, your bank account and, you know, your checkers account and your savings, what's like some accounts that we should be moving forward to become financially secure? I think one of the important ones, and uh, I actually was just not to pub them. I don't have any association. And I don't think you do either, but Chime. Chime's coming out with this credit building secured credit card. Okay. And I think well, that's one of the biggest tickets is finding good avenues to begin your credit score. Secured yeah. credit cards are going to be a very good introduction. If you have a family member who trusts you, you can become mm -hmm. an authorized user on their credit card, or you can go and open that traditional one. I think every young person in America needs credit cards. That's where Dave Ramsey and I disagree is yeah. I think we need to understand how to use them wisely, but I mm -hmm. think we need them because it is the beginning of our financial reputation in the credit score um, basically there's another account that you mentioned earlier that i think is phenomenal that every student in america should have is that roth ira mandatory mandatory <laughs> mandatory chapter 10 our last action in the money vehicle program is go open your roth ira and that's where uh, you are going to start investing in future you for the long term because if i ask people today would you rather pay taxes twice on your investments? Would you rather pay taxes at the end? Or would you have to pay taxes today and never again? Most mm -hmm. students go, well, if I can pay it today and then never have to worry about it again, it sounds pretty good to me. That so you just gave us that big benefit of the Roth. For anybody listening, yeah, but that is the major benefit of that Roth IRA, tax-free growth. But what is the major benefit of that secured card? That secured card says, well, so what a traditional credit card is technically an unsecured loan, meaning there's no collateral. Okay. If I have a mortgage and I don't pay my mortgage, they take my house. If I have a car mm. and I don't pay my car, they take my car. With a credit yeah. card, there is no asset. There's nothing they can take from me, which is why they charge a high, high interest rate, 20 plus mm -hmm. percent. So yeah. as we look at this secured credit card, it is functioning just like a traditional credit card, but in this sense, the collateral, mm -hmm. the underlying asset is dollars I've put into it. So let's say I put okay, in- Okay, so your own money. Your own money. I put in okay. $300 into this, and now I can use that $300 like a line of credit. And as long as I'm handling it correctly, I'm starting to build my credit score into the right direction. And so it okay. is a, uh, a beginner step and a one that many, um, 
And many people coming, international students coming from out of the country, they've never had to deal with credit. Their cultures, their communities, their families mm -hmm. didn't, the debt is bad. You know, we don't, we don't play with credit cards. Coming yeah. here, they are very fearful of that industry as they should be because of the endless bad decisions. But mm -hmm. that is an avenue that they can explore to really step into that world and step out on a positive light. And even not even just, you know, foreign students, a lot of our minority students Absolutely. here, oh, yeah. you know, in the U.S., because our parents were never educated mm -hmm. on financial literacy and credit education. And you know what they say, if you don't understand something, you fear it. Absolutely. You know, so they're putting that fear into us and putting that. But things have changed, mm -hmm. you know, or not even things have changed. Just the education and resources have changed. So now we know that credit cards are not the devil. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, credit cards are not bad. Banks as they're, well. Come on now. They're useful yeah. if you know how to use them, but you have to get educated yeah. on how to use that tool. You know yes. what I'm saying? So, and that's a, they, that's a great kind of mindset is debt is a tool. Don't be one. You know, like, come on now. You use debt or debt uses you. Who's the tool in the situation? But it, it is 100%. education. That is a big, big piece of it. Yep. Yeah, because I, I saw one quote. It was like financially literate people. They take advantage of compounding interest. Yeah. You know, financially illiterate people they they hey. they're they're paying compounding mm -hmm. interest. So, definitely a hundred percent agree with you on that, man. And you know, I want to touch back on your on your NFL career because, like you said, you had a very long career, uh, been with about three or four different teams. And you know, during that time, you say you you know you documented your journey, and there were like mm -hmm. ups and downs. Give our entrepreneurs some tips because I really need them to understand, you know, the entrepreneurs and the entertainers and the athletes, you know, this, the payment schedules are completely different. Oh, you yeah. Know what I mean, you could, you could be having, you could be having a, a, a $20,000 a month and then the next month make zero, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The next month make five. So for our entrepreneurs, our entertainers, our athletes out there who don't have a regular income schedule, what are some tips to uh, manage their money better and, and really become aligned with their money. Well, let me say this, and I don't say this lightly or, or don't take this the wrong way, but it was the NFL. So 20,000, it was more like $200,000 weeks. Uh, uh, some of these cats are making a, an exorbitant amount of money, but what we used to be, and they just actually changed this. It used to be 17 weeks in the season, which meant you got 17 game checks. The NFL is a pay for performance kind of league. And uh -huh. if you get cut, you don't, you don't get that check that week. But the caveat there is you make a lot of money between September and January. Come February, mm -hmm. nobody's making any more money. So if you've oh, not gosh. managed it and used it, which most rookies didn't, that was an issue and that was a problem. So mm -hmm. what I love to do is scale out my burn rate. Look at the dollars. And I, I use my Ooh. present and past expenses. But I uh -huh. look at those dollars and I say, what is the lifestyle I want to sustain throughout my year? And I build it mm -hmm. based on not on my income. One of the great quotes, again, I you can tell I love quotes, but the <laughs> uh, the difference between your, your savings rate is the difference between your ego and your income. And as you Ooh, look at it, yeah, talk right. To it's, it's, talk it's, to it's, it. That's a good one because it's it, it humbles you. But as you look at it, you say, I want my lifestyle <laughs> to be X. And if I can understand X is my lifestyle then I can start to look at where and how my paycheck is going to be used. But it starts with where I want my lifestyle to be. So if mm -hmm. you do have that, uh, uh, you know, salespeople, I talk to them all the time, you got to stop playing the highs, the peaks and the valleys. You got to find that X lifestyle that you want I to like live. That. And you, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what the check is coming in next month because you've already prepared. You already have where and how your cash is going to be employed. So, and even that baseline that you said, that's the true way to accumulate Freedom. wealth. Yeah. You know, whenever you start making more money, you don't increase your expenses. You keep them at that baseline that yeah. you mentioned so you can continue to build wealth. Because the biggest thing is it's not about how much money you can make. It's about how much you can keep. Yep. So if you can stay here and now you're getting more and more money and now you're able to invest more and save more. And now you're still able to you know live off your expenses and Man, that's just the best way to do it. That's that's so, the only. I don't want to say the only way. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat, but fact. but yes, if you can, and that's the same way with everybody wants to. I, I don't like the I don't like the B word budget. I don't like the R word retire. 
I think we need mm. to retire that word because freedom is very different. Freedom is, is mm. not a, a set number that we're aiming for. And that freedom is when my lifestyle is at a place I can sustain. And that is a big okay. shift and big perspective of my freedom could be $5,000 a month, whereas this person could be 50 or, or 25. Got you. So that's why people need to look at themselves, not just a, a superficial number. Exactly. You, nobody's money journey is the same. And so you mm-hmm. begin, what is freedom and what is my plan? It begins with that lifestyle. If, if I mm-hmm. can manage and look at that lifestyle, then I can build a plan to achieve it. And that's kind of what I did with, you know, with my lifestyle budget. You mm-hmm. know, I looked at everything that I'm going to be spending money on, all my fixed expenses, everything that I know I'm going to spend on in a month, month after month is in that fixed expense. And then after that, all that is spendable income on whatever I want. Yep. You know what I mean? So I really love that. But we did talk about proper money management for like if you're getting in a regular income. But what about our nine to five workers? Like, how does that differ from the entrepreneur and athlete who are not getting paid on a regular schedule? It shouldn't. It shouldn't mm-hmm. at all. That's why I love our five, you know, five bucket system. Any uh-huh. paycheck should be divided up into what you are prioritizing. And gotcha. one thing we need to realize is is the greats. What I realized playing with NFL players is they don't sacrifice. They prioritize. <laughs> Getting up at 5 a.m. isn't a sacrifice. It's a priority because they want to get better. They value uh-huh. what they want most over what they want right now. So if you are a nine to five and you start looking mm-hmm. at how do I get autonomy? How do I get control? How do I, I need to value what I want most. And you need to begin with that end in mind. That is one of the yeah. most powerful tools in money is why, why mm-hmm. are you going to prioritize these things? You need to define that. And I think that's also plays into delayed gratification. Absolutely. You know, if you can delay that gratification, that reward or that benefit is going to be much greater. This was great, man. Thank you so much for joining the FY Fly podcast. Let us know where we can reach you and, you know, what you got coming forward. Yeah, you can check out our course curriculum at yourmoneyvehicle.com. We've got a financial literacy certification. Um, and you can follow me at Fullback of Finance on all social medias. Obviously, LinkedIn is my name is Jedediah Collins. Uh, would love to hear if you got a nugget out of this. Um, but the last thing I will say is keep following the the man with the plan. Keep keep getting this, investing in yourself. Um, FYI, fly like this is such a cool uh, ability for you to share your message and your voice, brother. And you are impacting people with every time you do. So uh, I applaud you for that. Man, I appreciate it, man. So much, so much. I'm glad you was able to come on and drop all these gems, man. I can't wait myself to go back and listen to them (laughs) just, man. So thank you so much for real. Enjoy the day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I need all my listeners to stay safe, stay invested, and stay FYI fly. We'll see you next week. Thank you all for listening to FY Fly, the podcast, and we hope you enjoyed the show. Tune in next week for more financial literacy insights with our special guests. Please visit our website, social media platforms, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at FYI Fly Podcast. That's FYI FLI Podcast. See y'all next week and stay fly.